Hello, this is Josh Patel back again with another biology video. Today, we're going to be doing chapter 30, which is respiratory and circulatory systems. So, we'll start at 30.1, which is respiratory and circulatory function. So, our key concept is the respiratory and circulatory systems bring oxygen and nutrients to the cells, so that's their job. The respiratory and circulatory systems work together to maintain homeostasis. So basically everything in our body, everything we're trying to do is to maintain homeostasis and maintaining homeostasis basically means you're trying to live. So the circulatory system transports blood and other materials. So it brings supplies to the cell, carries away waste, separates oxygen poor and oxygen rich blood. So the circulatory system includes all your arteries, veins, and basically everything that helps flow blood throughout your body and the blood carries things within it to the cells. So the respiratory system is where gas exchange occurs, picks up oxygen from the inhaled air and expels carbon dioxide and waste. So it includes the tranquilla and the lungs. So basically the blood goes around so it gets oxygen from the lungs. So it carries around oxygen and delivers it to the cells and then they also carry or it takes away the carbon dioxide from the cells and exhales it or gives it back to the lungs to exhale. So the respiratory system moves gas gases into and out of the body. The lung contains the bronchi, bronchioles, and the alveol, alveoli. So millions of alveoli give the lungs a huge surface area. The alveoli absorbs oxygen from the air as you inhale. So the bronchiole is the the here, I think it might be on the other picture. So we have the sinus, we have which is above our nose. We have the nose and mouth, and as we know, they connect. And the epigolus is this little flap in the back in the throat that basically opens up and lets things through or keeps out certain things. And the trachea is this branch part, or the main part uh, that's holding up our lungs. And then inside the lungs, we have the bronchi and the alveoles. So the alveoli are these little clumpy things, and they give it a bigger surface area. And surface area, as we know, is usually always better. So that's why things are usually shaped they are. It's Most of the time, it's to increase surface area. And the bronchioles is this little piece that's supporting it. So breathing involves the diaphragm and muscles of the ribcage. Air flows from areas of high pressure to low pressure. So from high to low, it's kind of like temperature. Temperature also flows from high to low. So we air inhale, so we inhale air, and it makes our muscles contract and the rib cage expands. So the diaphragm flattens and moves downward. And then when we exhale air, so we breathe it out, our muscle and rib cage relax, so it decompresses, and the diaphragm relaxes and rises up. So the circulatory system moves blood to all parts of the body. The system includes the heart, the arteries, the veins, and the capillaries. The heart pumps blood through the body, arteries move blood away from the heart, and veins move blood back to the heart. So capillaries get blood to and from cells. So there are three major functions of the circulatory system, transporting blood, gas, nutrients, collecting waste material, maintaining body temperature. So respiration and gas exchange. The respiratory system exchanges oxygen and carbon dioxide. Gas exchange occurs in the alveoles and the lungs. So oxygen and carbon dioxide are carried by the blood to and from the alveoli. So oxygen diffuses from the alveoli into capillary. And capillary, as we read before, basically delivers things to the cells. Oxygen binds to hemoglobin in red blood cells. Carbon dioxide diffuses from capillary into the alveoli, and lining of the alveol must be moist to help diffusion. So it's basically showing how CO2 comes in and out of, where CO2 goes in to the alveol to breathe it out, basically. So breathing is regulated by the brain stem. And as we learned, or we kind of briefly went over it, the brainstem controls the basic functions of life. So basically everything here is basically controlling the basic functions of life. Respiratory disease interferes with gas exchange. 
Lung disease reduces airflow and oxygen absorption. So emphysema destroys the alveoli. So and asthma constricts the airway. So asthma they don't they can't breathe because their airways are constricted. And so the medicine they take from the I forgot what it's called, the tube, the inhaler, they basically freeze up their airways. So cystic fibrosis produces sticky mucus. In an illustration of gas exchange, so CO2 diffuses from the capillary into the alveolus. O2 diffuses from the alveolus into the capillary. So it's basically saying, okay, so there's a two-way exchange. And since we know we breathe in oxygen, oxygen must come out of the alveolus and go into the capillary system. And then as since we know that the capillary system is trying to get toxins out of our body, it takes the CO CNO and we want to get it out. So the alveolus has to bring it out so it goes into it. So red blood cells carry CO2 into the lungs. Hemoglobin is an iron rich protein that allows more O2 to enter the red blood cells. So it basically helps, helps the red blood cells carry more O2. And red blood cells carry O2 away from the lung, so towards the body. Smoking is the leading cause of lung disease, so don't smoke. So the heart and circulatory system. Key concept is the heart is a muscular pump that moves the blood through two pathways. The tissue and structure of a heart makes it an effective pump and yeah, efficient pump. Cardiac muscle tissue works continuously without tiring. So this is a normal human heart. And the heart has four chambers, two atria and two verticals, ventricles. So valves in each chamber prevent backflow of blood. So we don't exactly have to know ex all the little parts of the heart. It's very complicated. And they will rarely ask you a question on the test about the heart. So muscles squeeze the chamber in a powerful pumping action. So the heartbeat consists of two contractions. So as we know, our heart beats, it thumps, then the doctor listens to it. And it you should hear like a da-dump, da-dump. So there's two contractions. So SA node or pacemaker stimulates atria to contract. And AV node stimulates ventricles to contract. And that's not important. So blood flows through the heart in a specific pathway. So from the upper body to the lungs. So basically there's a bunch of different pathways the blood flows through the heart. And one chamber has the has non-oxygenated air blood and the other has oxygen so blood flows through the heart in specific pathways oxygen poor blood enters the right atrium and then the right ventricle so oxygen poor blood without oxygen is on the right side and the right ventricle pumps blood to the lung so it's getting ready to release its carbon dioxide oxygen rich blood comes from the left atrium and the left ventricle so I guess remember oxygen poor has to do, has is on the right side and oxygen rich blood has to do with the left side. So the left ventricle pumps blood to the body and then the heart pumps blood through two main pathways. We have the formatory circulation occurs between the heart and the lungs and oxygen poor blood enters the lungs, excess carbon dioxide and waste expelled. Blood picks up oxygen and oxygen rich blood returns to the heart. And that's, we don't need to know the specific names of that. So the systemic circulati circulation occurs between the heart and the rest of the body. Oxygen rich blood goes to the organs extremities and oxygen poor blood returns to the heart. The two pathways help maintain a stable body temperature. 30.4 blood vessels and transport. Oops, our key concept is the circulatory system transport materials through the body, which we already know. So arteries, veins, and capillaries transport blood to all parts of the body. Arteries carry blood away from the heart, so blood under great pressure. Thicker, more muscular walls, so arteries are bigger than veins. And veins carry blood back to the heart. Blood under less pressure, thinner walls, larger diameter. Or, well, arteries have, like, they're thicker, but they're, the veins have larger diameters. 
So valves prevent backflow. And it's not that important to know the difference between arteries and veins. It's kind of important, but it's not that important. Capillaries move blood between veins, arteries, and cells. So they both carry blood through the whole body made of the same three layer of tissues, smaller vessels that connect to capillaries. And capillaries basically help exchange veins. Blood pressure is measured from the force of blood pushing against the artery walls. Systolic blood pressure is left ventricle contracts and diastolic, diastolic, diastolic pressure is left ventricle relaxes. So one is when it contracts and one is relaxing. So the systolic is over the diastolic and that's how to read like if you want to if you want to be able to read blood pressure but we don't that's not required for biology high blood pressure can precede a heart attack or a stroke lifestyle plays a key role in circulatory diseases some choices lead to an increased risk of circulatory disease so smoking long term stress excessive weight lack of exercise diet in low in fruits and vegetables high in saturated fats so basically america Circulatory disease affects mainly the heart and the arteries. Artery walls become thick and inflexible. Plaque blocks, blow, blocks blood flow in arteries. So basically plaque builds up and the artery walls become hard and crusty and like rigid and it's hard for blood to move between. So normally all this would not be here and blood could flow through the whole thing but now blood has to go through this little pieces here. And sometimes this will chip and damage you. So if the blood flows and and chips off parts of the plaque or the cartil not cartilage, just the plaque, it might affect, it might hurt a lot. So blood. Blood is a complex tissue that transports materials. Blood is composed ma mainly of cells, cell fragments, and plasma. Whole blood is made of different materials. So we have plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. So, plasma is a key factor for maintaining homeostasis. Molecules diffuse into and out of plasma. It contains proteins that stabilize blood volume, contains clotting factors, contains immune prote proteins, and helps maintain homeostasis. So, it makes up 55% of the blood, so a little more than half. Clear yellow fluid, so it's kind of lightish yellow. It's 95% water. So platelets and different types of blood cells have different functions. The bone marrow manufactures most of the blood components, so most like blood cells, cell fragments, and so it forms clots to help stop bleeding. So these are the platelets. Platelets travel to spots where, let's say you got a cut on your hand, the platelets will form there and like protect it from bleeding out more, so it kind of stops bleeding. So it changes shape when needed to form a complex web that traps white blood cells. So red blood cells make up of 40 to 45 percent of all blood cells. Transports oxygen to cells and carries away carbon dioxide. Have no nuclei and contain hemoglobin. So concave, pillow-shaped, circulatory circulates in bodies for 120 days before degrading and being recycled. So they make new ones. Contains proteins marked with markers which determine blood type and Rh factor. So as we know, there's different blood types there's like B positive, B negative, A positive, A negative, and then we have O. So white blood cells fight pathogens and destroy foreign matter. So they kind of are part of our immune system. Remove foreign material and dead cells. Contain no hemoglobin. Can circulate through the lymphatic cycle system. So protein markers define blood types and Rh factors. ABO blood groups are the most common. Rh factors can be negative or positive. Blood types must be complicated for com com compatible for transfusions. So here we have basically all their different blood types. But that last slide wasn't that important. So platelets help form clots that control bleeding. So platelets basically just form and they group together to form clots and stop bleeding. That's basically their job. Lymphatic system. The lymphatic system provides another type of circul circulation in the body. Lymph is collections from tissues and returns to the circulatory system. 
So lymphatic cycle collects interstitial fluid that leaks out of the capillaries, cleans out the blood, filters the fluid, and returns to the circulatory system, defends body against pathogens, and removes foreign materials and dead cells from the lymph. So it basically cleans up our body. Lymph vessels, and it collects lymphs for circulate in and return to the circulatory system. So these include our lymph nodes. Destroy harmful bacteria and foreign organisms. So we have lymph nodes like all over our body that produce these things. Lymph is collected from tissue and returned to the circulatory system. Okay, that's repetitive. Clean and filter lymph to trap and destroy pathogens and other materials. So we have tonsils, tonsils, spleen, and the thymus. thymus. Tonsils and spleen clean and filter lymph. Thymus and spleen develop and contain many thymocytes and other white blood cells to destroy harmful bacteria and foreign organi organisms. Lymph is collected from tissue and returned to the circulatory system. Lymph vessels have waves to prevent backflow. And all this stuff about lymphs isn't that important. They're probably not going to ask you anything about them. So this is not that important. The lymphatic cycle is a major part of the immune system. Structures in the lymphatic system help fight diseases. Tonsils filter bacteria and viruses. And the thymus develops white blood cells. And we don't need to know any of that. So lymph lymphocytes help destroy pathogens, parasites, and foreign matter. So that's all about blood and the respiratory and circulatory system. And so these last couple of chapters are basically all about the body systems. And make sure you come back and watch chapter 31.